Resolution number nine. Thank you, Mr. President and, and members of the board. It's my extreme pleasure to bring awareness to an important issue um, to this legislative body. Um, April is the month of Genocide Awareness and Prevention Month. Um, many of us represent many diverse wards. A lot of folks have relocated to our city for new opportunities, new jobs, uh, family circumstances. But there are others that have relocated to our city and to our country um, because of past issues in their former country. We have many immigrants that are here in our city. And a lot of them have left um, just very uh, destructive passes. And I think it's important for us to show them compassion and for us to also be educated on the plight um, that many of those have experienced. Um, with me today, I have Anna Crossland, who's here with the International Institute. I have Kristen, who's here from the Center for Survivors of Torture and War Trauma. And I have Derek, who's here representing Amnesty International. There are many constituents in our community, those that may not go to neighborhood meetings, those that may not necessarily come out to community events, but they in turn have a story as to why they are here in our country. And um, we would just like to, to honor them and to recognize them and to just do our best to make sure that we serve their needs. Um, because it is Genocide Awareness Month, we do have a, a resolution that we would like to offer and I'm going to give this to Anna Croslin to just remember and to uh, make sure that we never forget what April signifies here in our country. Just very briefly, during the Second World War, Raphael Lemkin, a Polish lawyer of Jewish descent, motivated by the attempted extermination of the Armenian and Assyrian communities during the First World War, coined the term genocide to describe a coordinated plan of actions aimed at the destruction of a central foundation of the life of national groups with the aim of annihilating, annihilating a group itself, for example, by disintegrating a group's political and social institutions, culture, language, national feelings, religion, and economic existence. In 2008, the Prevention of Genocide Task Force convened, convened by the United States Holocaust Memorial Museum, the American Ca Academy of Diplomacy, and the United States Institute of Peace issued a report finding that in order to prevent future genocides and mass atrocities, effective prevention measures must be implemented before a crisis has erupted, and that educating the public can help to protect individual rights and promote a culture of lawfulness that will help prevent future genocides. So that's why we are here today. That's why we are passing this resolution to make sure that we never forget, to make sure that we honor and also continue to show compassion and dignity for our constituents that are here for many reasons. And with that, I would like to ask for Anna Crossland to step forward, offer us a few words of what the International Institute is doing doing to help the migrant population here in our city. Thank you. Thanks. Well, um, thank you so much for this resolution and recognition of uh, constituents that may be quiet in many of your wards, but um, are increasingly having an impact on, on particularly the city of St. Louis. You know, recently we heard that uh, the St. Louis metropolitan area was approximately 19th in terms of size compared to metropolitan agencies around the United States. When you look at refugee populations around the United States, you find that our metropolitan area is about 21st. When you look at immigrants proportionately in those population, in those metro areas, you find that we're 60th. So the reality is that Im refugees in this community have a much higher impact than immigrants do, which is almost reverse many other metropolitan areas around the, con the country. This is particularly true in the city of St. Louis, where many of the refugees live when they first arrive. That's because the International Institute is located near Grand and Winnebago on the south side, and we try very hard 
to resettle the refugees when they first arrive, a single bus ride or walking distance from the institute doesn't always work, but because of the cost of transportation and the fact that they have to get back and forth every day to classes, then we try very hard to at least um, get them in, in, in a distance where, where they can get back and forth easily. So many of the aldermen that are here, in fact, um, do have individuals within their wards, uh, both early arrivals and then those who have moved later on and relocated to um, other more widespread um, uh, wards around, uh, around the city and, and even some into South County. And I want you to remember that while life seems to be relatively quiet for them now, most of them, the reason they're here is because, in fact, they were escaping um, horrific conditions in their home countries, including genocide. This is particularly the case for the Africans that are in the community. It was the case for the Bosnians earlier on. Whether it is referred to as ethnic cleansing, it is still genocide. And they have come a remarkable way, and yet they have so much further to go. And it is really, um, I think, wonderful how much our city has reached out to be able to help them. And I look forward to continue to work with all of you, in fact, to help them make those next steps as well. Thank you. Thank you, Casey, for recognizing us today. My name is Kristen Bulin, and I'm with the Center for Survivors of Torture and War Trauma. And as my name, or the, our agency name, is kind of very um, uh, in your face, actually. Um, we, like Anna Croslin and International Institute, follow and work with these individuals from Rwanda, from Congo, from Ethiopia, from Somalia, from... Uh, uh, Togo, from Afghanistan, Iraq, and Iran, and we're located in the Forest Park Southeast neighborhood. So as the International Institute helps get them resettled and working on programs to continue their progress, we work on the mental health side because they come with those survival painful, painful memories that affect their mind and their body. And they want to be able to regain, relive, re rebuild themselves and their families and in your wards they're all over and that's what they want to do so what we do is help regain that help their spirit help their empowerment get them independent and any way possible we can do that so we know many of them as Anna mentioned that they're all from many countries who are escaping genocide. So this awareness today and who we see on the street, who we see in schnooks, who we see, they're all over and they are a major part of our city. So thank you very much for making this an awareness and recognizing. Thank you. My name is Derek Redhead and I'm a local group coordinator for Amnesty International and I'd just like to uh, bounce off the great comments of what a great honor this is to have this level of awareness. Um, as somebody who was very active in the Save Darfur campaign, I feel like this resolution really reminds us that unfortunately genocide isn't a problem that has left our world. Um, so I just once again really appreciate this recognition and this awareness. Um, and uh, on behalf of all human rights activists in St. Louis, there is a very active community and we're constantly monitoring events and we're constantly looking to get ahead of any future problems um, related to genocide. So uh, once again, I'd like to thank uh, Alderman Triplett for this uh, wonderful honor and this, this resolution. Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Alderman from the 20th. President, members of the board, uh, first of all, thank you for all of your efforts. Um, and I know that I'm speaking to the choir because I know how much work everyone down here and throughout many of our wards and communities is doing to help folks. Um, it just seems to me sometimes when we use the word genocide that it seems like this far off sort of thing. And um, it really isn't. It seems to me at least um, what I see from time to time is it begins with language and it begins with a mindset. Uh, we do, we, we are enriched by a lot of refugees. The International Institute is part of that and the other groups that are up there. Um, 
And I just want to, I, I know that we do have some people in our communities that don't all have the same mindsets and don't all speak in the same way that we all do down here. And so I appreciate this resolution insofar as it brings us to remember that genocide isn't just something that happened in World War II. It isn't just something that's happening in Syria. It isn't just something that's happening in, in Bosnia, Croatia, Herzegovina. It, it, it can happen even in our pluralistic society if we forget that we're human and that we have those tendencies, particularly today with all of our economic constraints. I know that a lot of people are hard pressed and sometimes they think that it's a zero sum game that in order for them to succeed, somebody else has to fail. And so thank you very much. I appreciate it. And uh, as, if we continue to remind some of our neighbors that you know, just by picking on somebody else who doesn't look like them because they have some of the cultural dress from where they've come from that will not enrich their lives. I think this is a very positive thing. Thank you. All right, thank you. All the one from the 14th. I rise in support of this resolution. Uh, being representative of the 14th Ward, the Bevo area, we have a, a, a beginning, a culture of rich diversity in our ward. We have many organizations that work in concert with the International Institute in the ward. Um, we, I appreciate what you do, and I appreciate your service of integrating the immigrant population and the refugee population to become productive citizens in the U.S. And they are becoming part of the fabric of St. Louis, and respectfully. And hopefully, we will have them for generations as part of our cultural history. Thank you. I want from 19. Thank you, Mr. President. Well, I wanted to stand uh, and give my um, thank yous to all the organizations that are represented today, and most especially to Ann. Ann and I see each other on our roller skates at all these various meetings working on behalf of immigrants and, and around the city, and it's an it's a enormous task, but I know she's dedicated and she's always there. I appreciate all of her efforts in spearheading some of those ethnic groups and being more organized and supportive of each other. Uh, I'm proud to say that I will have the first uh, African Community Center in my ward, which will represent 32 countries in Africa. And they're planning already their partnerships with the schools and the arts institutes to tell their stories and inviting the communities in because it's, it's, it's heart-wrenching. I had no idea until I just got closer. But I think about the Hispanic population, the Bosnians, even the Chinese now are even more prevalent in our communities. So I'm just really thankful that you are there and you're really doing a great job. All right, thank you. All the one from the 16th. Thank you, Mr. President and members of the board. I would also like to stand very much so in favor of this resolution because I met Anna Crossland back in the 90s when I was working with the Southside Bosnian Collaborative and we were helping with the assimilation of the Bosnians. And we used to have meetings in the basement of Resurrection School. And unfortunately, we held those meetings the first Tuesday of the month. And for those of you who recall, the first Tuesday of the month is when we have the tornado sirens. Well, for the new Bosnians who would come to those meetings, we'd be sitting there and the sirens would hit and they'd all dive and hide under the tables. So that was never more driven home than that time. And that's when Red Cross and we began on the books to try to go back to Bosnia and identify the remains of the people they were missing. Thank you. All right, thank you. Any further discussion? Any further discussion? I also would just like to, you know, thank you on behalf of the city, the rest of the board of all of them, my family and friends, each and every one of you, for, for the work that you're doing throughout our community to raise awareness. A lot of times on issues, especially genocide, uh, you know, one of the biggest challenges is raising awareness so that people know, and when we put a light on it, it begins to change. So, so thank you for, for doing it. I know it's a, a tough job, and I know it's an uphill battle, but we stand with you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.